Nask ensk is an Arabic word usually translated as abrogation. It refers to the theory in Islamic legal exegesis whereby seemingly contradictory material within, or between, the two primary sources of Islamic law—the Quran and the Sunnah—are resolved by superseding or cancelling the earlier revelation. Several Quranic verses state that some revelations have been abrogated and superseded by later revelations, which are understood by many Muslim scholars as pertaining to the verses of the Quran itself. Some examples include a gradual ban on consumption of alcohol and a change in Qibla the direction someone praying Salat should face from Jerusalem to Mecca, with few exceptions, neither the Quran, nor recorded sayings and doings of Muhammad known as Ahadith that make up the Sunnah, state which Quranic verses or Ahadith have been abrogated. However narrations from Muhammad's companions mention abrogated verses or rulings of the religion, and the principle of abrogation of an older verse by a new verse in the Quran, or within the Hadiths, was an established principle in Sharia at least by the 9th century. The possibility of abrogation between these two primary sources of Islam the Quran and Sunnah has been a more contentious issue. The allowability of abrogation between sources has been one of the major differences between the Shafi'i and Hanafi schools of fiqh jurisprudence, with Shafi'i forbidding abrogation of the Quran by the Sunnah, and the Hanafi allowing it. Muslim exegetes and jurists disagree over which and how many ahadith and verses of the Quran are recognized as abrogated, with estimates varying from less than 10 to over 500. Topic: <laughs> Definition and etymology. Nask has been defined as abrogation, revocation, repeal. Theoretical tool used to resolve contradictions in Quranic verses, hadith literature, tafsir, Quranic exegesis, and usul al fiqh roots of law, whereby later verses or reports or decisions abrogate earlier ones. An exegetical explaining theory of the repeal or abolition of a law for divine commands in the Quran and the hadiths, wherein the contradictory verses, within or between these Islamic scriptures, are analyzed. Through Nasq, the superseding verse as well as the superseded verses are determined for the purposes of formulating sharia. The phrase al-nasiq wal-mansiq al the abrogating and abrogated verses, is often used in study of Nasq and both nasiq and mansiq share the same root as Nasq. Lifting a ruling indicated by a shari text, on the basis of evidence from the Quran or Sunnah. Obliteration, cancellation, transfer, suppression, suspension, depending on the context. The abrogation, suspension, or replacement of one Sharia ruling by another with the conditions that the suspending, replacing rule is of a subsequent origin and the two rulings are enacted separately from one another. According to some Muslim sources, Quran Academy, Abu Amina Elias, etc., the early generations of Muslims Salaf, would often use the word abrogation in the sense of specification, exception, or clarification. Rather than totally cancelling out a verse, descriptions of Nasq by Sunni legal theorists of the 10th and 11th centuries include God's replacing a ruling established by the lawgiver's address with another ruling. Temporal indication of a ruling's duration. Topic. Scriptural basis Words containing the root stem nskh occur four times within the Quran in verses 7 to 154, 45 to 29, 22 52, and 2 to 106. The first two occurrences come in the context of texts and scribal activity. In the writing, nuska thereon, q. 7 to 154, and for we were wont to put on record nastansik all that ye did, q. 45 to 29. Topic. Verses of abrogation The Quran contains two verses of abrogation, which establish the principle in Islam that an older verse may be abrogated and substituted with a new verse, a principle that has been historically accepted and applied by vast majority of Islamic jurists on both the Quran and the Sunnah. Any revelation we cause to be superseded or forgotten, we replace with something better or similar. Do you prophet not know that God has power over everything? Tr. Abdul Halim When we substitute one revelation for another, and Allah knows best what he reveals in stages, they say, Thou art but a forger. But most of them understand not. 
Other verses believed to indicate the principle of Nasc are 1339, Allah doth blot out or confirm what he pleaseth, with him is the mother of the book, which gives confirmation of the two major modes of abrogation i.e., suppression nasc and supersession. Mansic. Allah doth blot out or confirm what he pleaseth. 17-86. If it were our will, we could take away that which we have sent thee by inspiration. 87-6-7. By degrees shall we teach thee to declare the message, so thou shalt not forget, except as Allah wills, for he knoweth what is manifest and what is hidden. The verse 16 to 101 was employed by Imam Shafi'i, the founder of the Shafi'i school of Sunni Islamic jurisprudence, Midhab, in his theory of abrogation between sources as proof that a Quranic verse can only be abrogated by another Quranic verse. Topic: <laughs> Satanic verses and abrogation. An indication of why at least one Quranic verse was abrogated is found in 2252. Never did we send a messenger or a prophet before thee, but, when he framed a desire, Satan threw some vanity into his desire, but Allah will cancel anything vain that Satan throws in, and Allah will confirm and establish his signs, for Allah is full of knowledge and wisdom. This verse, cited by Tabari in connection with the incident of the so-called satanic verses, supported an interpretation of Nasq as eradication from the mizhaf of the Qur'an and thus made acceptable the idea of Nasq as the nullification of a verse and ruling Nasq al-hukum wa al-tilawa without any replacement. According to John Burton, Tabari's interpretation tafsir, states that God removed some of the early verses that the devil had cast into the Quran and replaced them in later verses. Ibn Taymiyyah also identified the form of Nasq where a satanic verse something that Satan has managed to insinuate into revelation through prophetic error," is cancelled by a divine one, which he calls al-na' al ikarman al nasq Later exegetes such as Maki insist that verse 2252 does not indicate the Islamic legitimacy of the concept of nasq for divine revelation but only shows that God eradicated with later recital what the devil insinuated into the Prophet's recital. These Islamic scholars relegated verse 2252 of the Quran to merely lexical significance. Topic. Verses stating what is abrogated Many cases of Nasq depend on the agreement of scholars to determine if a verse was abrogated, and on tafsir reports or the recollection of hadith transmitters to explain what verse or prophetic statement was revealed before another. However, one Quranic verse and one hadith specifically mention some earlier command to be abrogated and replaced with another, though they do not use any form of the word nasq. Quranic verse 2 to 143 minus 50 commands Muhammad and the Muslims to turn their faces away from the direction of prayer that you faced before Jerusalem to a new one, one that pleases your heart, by which is meant the Al Haram Mosque of Mecca. In one hadith Muhammad changes an earlier command to his followers, I had prohibited you from visiting graves, but visit them, for indeed in visiting them there is a reminder of death. Topic. Need, scope, quantity Topic. Dealing with apparent contradictions The scope of the doctrine of Nasq has been controversial, and some Islamic scholars a minority disagree with its premise, usage and applicability. The Quran was revealed by Muhammad over 23 years, while Sunnah in the Hadiths traditionally are held as the sayings and practices of Muhammad over this same period. From the early period of Islam's history, scholars noted that certain early verses and later verses covered the same topic, but were contradictory in their requirements. The contradictory commands exist in the Quran, among a hadith of the Sunnah, as well as between verses of the Quran and the ahadith of the Sunnah, since a defining claim of Sunni Islam is that no two authentic hadith could contradict each other or the Quran and nothing in the Quran could contradict anything else in the Quran. Scholars worked to resolve these apparent contradictions. Working with a hadith, scholars first strove to harmonize these, i.e. to make them fit together by reinterpreting them. If that failed they would look for signs of abrogation that one saying, doing, inaction by Muhammad was earlier than the other and had been replaced by the later saying, doing, inaction. 
If there was no opportunity for abrogation, they would check the isnad, chains of transmission of the ahadith, to see if the transmission of one hadith was superior to another. Finally, if the isnad were not different they would approve the hadith that seemed closest to the overall message of the Quran and Sunnah. Topic. Meeting needs of Islam Preachers argue that different situations encountered over the course of Muhammad's more than two-decade term as Prophet required new rulings to meet the Muslim community's changing circumstances. Or, since God is all-knowing, the expiration points of those rulings God intended as temporary all along were reached. J.A.C. Brown calls Nask an expression of the notion that aspects of the Quran's message and the Prophet's teachings developed over time. Abu Amina Elias states that Nask is a recognition that one rule might not always be suitable for every situation. Far from Allah changing his mind, abrogation demonstrates the wisdom of Allah in legislating rules for their appropriate time and context. For most rules in Islam, there exist circumstances that warrant an exception to the rule. Nask applies to only the regulative verses of the Islamic scriptures. In Tabari's words, God alters what was once declared lawful into unlawful, or vice versa, what was legally unregulated into prohibited and vice versa. But such changes can occur only in verses conveying commands, positive and negative. Verses cast in the indicative and conveying narrative statements, can be affected by neither nasik abrogating material nor mansik abrogated material. According to scholar Recep Doan, the three types of evidence allowed for naskara report from Muhammad or companions, b. ijma consensus of the muaytahids upon nask and c. knowledge of the chronology of the Quranic revelation. The plausibility and validity of abrogation is determined through a chronological study of the primary sources, where early revelations are considered invalid and overruled by later revelations. This has historically been a difficult task because the verses in the Quran are not arranged by chronology but rather by size of chapters, and even within a chapter, the verses are non-chronologically arranged. The verses 2-190, 2-191 and 2-192, for example, were revealed to Muhammad six years after the verse 2-193. Thus, the context of each revelation is not ascertainable from verses near a verse, or the sequential verse number. Andrew Rippon complains that Nask texts in Islam do not demonstrate that verses rendered invalid by Sharia law were revealed earlier, but simply assume they must be. A classic example of this is the early community's increasingly belligerent posture towards its pagan and Jewish neighbors. Many verses counsel patience in the face of the mockery of the unbelievers, while other verses incite to warfare against the unbelievers. The former are linked to the chronologically anterior Meccan phase of the mission when the Muslims were too few and weak to do other than endure insult, the latter are linked to Medina where the Prophet had acquired the numbers and the strength to hit back at his enemies. The discrepancy between the two sets of verses indicates that different situations call for different regulations. Topic. Quantity of abrogation Muslim exegetes and jurists have disagreed and disputed the number of verses of the Quran and Sunnah in the hadiths recognized as abrogated. According to John Burton 564 verses in all were alleged to have been expunged from the mashaf internal nasq within the Quran, or one eleventh of its total content. Another source states that by the 10th century CE, Islamic scholars had enumerated over 235 instances of contradictions and consequent abrogation nasq, which later doubled to a list of over 550. Sadaqat Qadri quotes an estimate of 71 of the Quran's 114 surah containing abrogated verses. The 10th century Islamic scholar Hibatullah, according to John Burton, lists 237 instances of abrogation, with the verse 9 to 5 the so called sword verse, alone accounting for almost half of the abrogated verses. But, the 10th century scholar Abu Jafar and Nahas and 16th century Islamic scholar Al Suyuti find only 20 cases of abrogation. As Zarkani concludes that only 12 cases of abrogation have occurred. While the 18th century Muslim scholar Shah Wali Allah have suggested that just five instances of abrogation exist in the Quran, and the 19th century Islamic scholar Sayyid Ahmad Khan stated that, no verse of the Quran is abrogated. This is explained by 
Yasser Qadi explains that one reason for the difference in number of abrogated verses comes from a confusion over nask abrogation and toxies clarification. Qadi cites the following as an example of toxies. Verse 8 to 1 says the spoils are for Allah and his messenger, whereas 841 says one fifth is for Allah and his messenger. Thus verse 841 explains 8 to 1, it doesn't cancel it. Yet many scholars, he says, include clarified verses with abrogated ones to produce a large total of abrogated verses. Ibn al Qayyim and Abu Amina Elias argue that what early Muslims called abrogating was actually interpretation. The general meaning of the righteous predecessors when using the words abrogating and abrogated is sometimes the complete removal of the previous ruling, and this is the technical term of the latter generations, or sometimes the removal of the general, absolute, and outward meaning, whether by specification, restriction, interpreting an absolute as limited, or by explanation and clarification. Even they would refer to as as exceptional and conditional. Topic. Hadith emphasizing importance. A number of reports of prominent early Muslims, such as Rashidun Caliphs Umar bin al-Khattab and Ali bin Abi Talib, emphasize the importance of studying Nasq. In one report, Ali told a judge who had no knowledge of Nasik that he was deluded and misleading others. In another, he evicted a preacher from a mosque for being ignorant of the science of abrogation. Umar is reported to have told Muslims that despite the fact that Ubay ibn Qab was the best Quranic expert among us. We ignore some of what? He says because he disregarded abrogation and told others he refused to abandon anything I heard from the Messenger of Allah. Usage Islamic scholars have offered a range of opinion as to the technical meaning and usage of Nasq. These span between suspension with replacement of the old verse ibdal to the nullification of the old verse ibl. To work around this problem exegetes such as Tabari interpolated hukum ruling in place of the word ayah verse, arguing that the something being replaced is the ruling not the verse, so that if a ruling is replaced the preservation or not of its wording in the mashaf written record of Quranic revelation is immaterial. Alternate interpretations were also suggested for the subordinate clauses. Cause to be forgotten on nansaha, such as defer or leave. This was primarily motivated by flight from the theological repugnant idea of prophetic forgetting, with Q15-9 cited as evidence of its impossibility. Yet verses Q17-86, Q18-24, and Q87-6-7 may seem to endorse its feasibility. Thus, Quran forgetting is clearly adumbrated in the Quran. Many ahadith also attest to the phenomenon, entire surahs which the Muslims had previously recited, claims one, would one morning be discovered to have been completely erased from memory cf. Abu Ubaid al-Qasim b. Salam. Topic. Modes Three modes of nasq were proposed by the classical exegetes, which apply when one verse of the Quran is being compared to another conflicting ruling in a verse in the Quran, or when one ruling in the sunnah in a hadith is being compared to another sunnah. Nasq concerns itself with only revelations pertaining to positive laws, commandments, amr, or prohibitions, nahi. Nasq al hukum duna al tilawa, abrogation of the ruling but the wording is kept in the scripture, applies to both Quran and Sunnah, or abrogation where there is supersession of an early verse by a later verse. Nasq al hukum wa al tilawa, abrogation of both ruling and wording, and its suppression, erasure from the scriptures, scripture being the Quran, not the Sunnah. Nasq al tilawa duna al hukum, abrogation of the wording in the Quran, not the Sunnah, but not the ruling. Also known as Nasq al Chara. Nasq al Hukum Duna al Tilawa. Abrogation of the ruling but not the wording. A regulation embodied within either a Quranic verse or a hadith is replaced with a new ruling, but its wording is retained in the scripture, as text within the mashaf. While retaining the text may cause confusion to those inadvertently following the repealed rule, according to Khan, tampering, doctoring with sacred texts has been rejected since medieval times. Of these three modes of nasq, it was the first 
Nasq al Hukum Duna al Tilawa, which received widespread recognition. Nasq al Hukum wa al Tilawa Abrogation of both ruling and wording. A ruling is voided and its text omitted from the mashaf. Evidence that the verse ever existed is preserved only within tradition. An example is a report from Aisha stating that, Among the things that were revealed of the Quran was that ten definite breastfeedings make a person a marim, i.e., if a woman breastfeeds a child ten times, that child cannot grow up to marry any of the woman's natural children, then that was abrogated and replaced with five definite breastfeedings, and the Messenger of Allah passed away when this was among the things that were still recited of the Quran. Narrated by Muslim, 1452. Liaquat Ali Khan states that, "...very few Muslim jurists concede that any portion of the Quran has been removed." Through this mode of abrogation. However, Wahhabi scholar Muhammad Sali al-Munajid describing these three modes of Nasq, and quote two other scholars Muhammad Abd al-Azim az-Zarqani and Ibn Atiyah who do also and John Burton writes that this second mode is generally acknowledged, in part due to the many alleged instances of revelatory erasure. Of special importance were allegations of actual omissions from the revelation such as those recording the loss of a verse in praise of the Bayramana martyrs, the Ibn Adam verse, and reports on the alleged originally longer versions of Surahs X or 33, said to have once been as long as Surah 2 and to have been the locus of the stoning verse. Ayat al-Rajm. Lists were compiled of revelations verifiably received by Muhammad and publicly recited during his lifetime until subsequently withdrawn raf, with the result that when the divine revelations were finally brought together into book form, there was collected into the mashaf only what could still be recovered following the death of the Prophet. The mashaf has from the outset been incomplete relative to the revelation, but complete in that we have all that God intended us to have. Nasq al Tilawa Duna al Hukam Abrogation of the wording but not the ruling. In this mode of abrogation, the text is deleted from the mashaf, but the rule is a still functional. Proof of the verse's existence is preserved within tradition, i.e., through a hadith report, as well as in the fiqh. This mode raises the question of why a verse important enough to be the basis of immutable hukam would disappear from the written Quran. It was accepted by only a minority of scholars. The most prominent alleged instance of this sort of abrogation is the nasq of the so-called ayat al-rajm, or stoning verse. Adduced to exist from a tradition derived from the caliph Umar, the verse provided Quranic sanction for the penalty for adultery found within the fiqh i.e. stoning in contravention to the penalty prescribed by Q24-2 flogging. The postulation of this mode stems indirectly, however, from the Shafi'i's principle that the Quran may not abrogate a hadith or a hadith abrogate the Quran. However strictly Shafi'i had approached the question of the feasibility or otherwise of the nasq of the Quran by the Sunnah, the fact cannot be disguised that he had admitted the stoning penalty for adultery into his fiqh. It is nowhere mentioned in the Quran Q, and has no other source than the Sunnah, as Schacht observed. On this point, Shafi'i's theoretical structure collapses. Shafi'i's failure to explain the presence of stoning in the fiqh which he had inherited exposed his usul theory to the criticism of follower and opponent alike, leading to its partial abandonment. Ironically, the attempt to ameliorate the usul position by reconciling the explanation of stoning to the obvious that the stoning penalty had derived from a stoning verse led, in turn, to the adoption by followers of non shafii usul of the rationalizing tag, Nasq al Tilawa Duna al Hukam. They needed no such principle, since they sanguinely accepted the feasibility of the Nasq of the Quran by the Sunnah. Though Shafi'i thus never in fact postulated the existence of a stoning verse, in one particular instance he did acknowledge the probability of abrogation of wording but not ruling, as well as acknowledging Aisha's claim that there was a stoning verse in Quran, which had been lost. The elimination of earlier verse from the mashaf that is part of the latter two modes of Nasq creates a distinction between the Quran as temporally contingent document i.e. the mashaf and the Quran as the unity of all revelation ever sent down to Muhammad. According to some exegetes this latter conception is not a wholly abstract one, but is a historical reality. Abrogating Jewish and Christian texts A fourth mode of Nasq, deemed external, is that between religions, 
In this mode, some Islamic scholars interpret Muhammad abrogated religious laws handed down by messengers before him from those of Jewish and Christian faiths, in order to, states John Burton, correct the major aberrations in Judaism and Christianity. According to Burton, that Muhammad accepted a doctrine of external nasq cannot be doubted. Since the abrogation verse 2 to 106 was revealed after a series of verses where Muhammad, among other things, abrogated many aspects of the Jewish halakha, may intend this sort of nasq. According to Muhammad Samil Abd al haq there are many commentators and other scholars who believe that in Ayah 2 to 106. None of our revelations do we abrogate or cause it to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Our revelations refers to the revelations before the Quran. Something better or similar refers to the Quran itself. However, the Arabic word in verses 2 to 106 and 16 to 101 that is translated as revelation is ayah, i.e., the word used to refer to the verses that make up the surahs of the Quran. The word used to describe the Quran, the Jewish Torah or the Christian New Testament is Kitab book. Topic. Process of abrogation Topic. Abrogation in the Quran Frequently cited examples of abrogation of older verses mansik with newer verses nasik within Quran are Topic. The sword verse. Abrogating verse, Q9-5 Ayat al-Saif, the sword verse, the verse which has been claimed by some Muslim scholars to abrogate the largest number of the early verses of the Quran while others concluded that it does not abrogate any verse. This claim of abrogation of tolerance of non-Muslims by Muslims, because of the sword verse, according to Fatui, has become relevant in recent times as it has been referred to by terrorist outfits, jihadists and individuals who justify their atrocities against non-Muslims by referring to this verse. A group of scholars allegedly claimed that it abrogated dozens of verses enjoining the Ummah's peaceable conduct towards outside groups. Habat Allah and Al-Nahas cite 124 and less than 20 verses, respectively. Ibn al-Jazi counts less than 22 verses while Mustafa Zayd counts less than six cases. The 11th-century Muslim scholar Maki bin Abi Talib stated, according to Lue Fatui, that verse 9.5 abrogated all pardoning, amnesty and forgiveness that Muslims had previously been asked to show to non-Muslims by earlier Quranic verses. In contrast, as Zarqanaya concludes that it does not abrogate any verse. According to the 12th century Islamic scholar Ibn al Arabi, states Fatui, this sword verse abrogated every mention in the Quran of showing amnesty to the disbelievers, ignoring and turning away from them. The Orientalist Thomas Walker Arnold explains that verses enjoining peaceful conduct were also found abundance in non Meccan surahs. However, most of these claims of abrogation cannot be considered as legitimate in the least. In point of fact, some of them merely apply to situations other than those that they were revealed for. Almost all of these abrogated verses can still be said to apply when the Muslims are in a situation similar to the situation in which these verses were revealed. Fatui includes examples of verses abrogated by 9 to 5 to be 3 to 186, 53.29, 43 to 89. Adding Tabari listed 9 to 5 to be abrogating 15 Quranic verses. Al Balki suggested it abrogated 16 verses. Ibn Hazm claimed it abrogated 94 Quranic verses. Ibn Kuzayma concluded 9 to 5 abrogated 116 Quranic verses, while Ibn Salama and Ibn al Arabi stated that it abrogated 124 verses. Various medieval Islamic scholars, but not all, considered verse 9 to 5 abrogated Quranic verse 2 to 256. There is no compulsion in religion. Fatui adds that regardless of historical scholarship, it is a serious flaw to suggest that Quranic verse 9 to 5 abrogated commands in older Quranic revelations that Muslims should be tolerant of non Muslims, when verse 9 to 5 is studied in the context of nearby verses and the fact that the Islamic scholars disagree with each other. Yasser Elithi states that historical exegesis included Jews and Christians as the others in the scope of abrogating verse 9 to 5. However, the historical analysis by Islamic scholars of abrogating tolerance against others was baseless according to Elithi. Topic: Other verses. 
Abrogating verses, Q58-12-58-13, historically the least disputed instance of Nasq doctrine among Islamic scholars. It states that those who seek a private audience with Muhammad must make a payment in advance to him, verses abrogated, Q.2, 234-240, Q.8, 65-66, Q73-1-420, Q2-142. Abrogating verses, Q411-12, which provide the Islamic law on gender-based inheritance, verses abrogated, Q2-180, Q2-240 also known as bequest verses. Abrogating verse, Nasik, Q8-66, reducing the number of enemies each Muslim is expected to vanquish from 10 to 1 to 2 to 1, verses abrogated, Q8-65, Abrogating verse, Q5 90, which institutes a complete ban on the consumption of alcohol verses abrogated, Q2 219, Q443. Abrogating verse, Q929 verses abrogated. Nahas considers 929 to have abrogated virtually all verses calling for patience or forgiveness toward the people of the book. Examples of inter Quranic abrogation, where one of the rulings comes from the Sunnah, are Verse, Q2 150 Abrogati, the Sunnah which established Jerusalem as the direction of prayer. Qibla. Verse, Q24 2 Abrogator, for those unwilling to countenance the existence of a lost ayat al Rajm, e.g., Qurtabai, al Ghazali, the prophetic Sunnah which establishes stoning to death as the penalty for adultery. Scholarly disagreement and criticism The principle of Nasq is acknowledged by both Sunnis and Shia. <inaudible> Muslim criticism Some Muslim scholars Al Rani and Shah Wali Allah were skeptical of the use of Nasq, considering it a sort of shortcut to be avoided. According to contemporary scholar Jonathan A.C. Brown al backquote Rani considered claims of abrogation to be the recourse of those mediocre and narrow-minded jurists whose hearts God had not illuminated with his light. They could not perceive all the interpretive possibilities in the words of God and the Prophet, by taking the shortcut of stamping Quranic verses or hadiths abrogated, such ulama had restricted the interpretive plurality that God had intended in the Sharia. For Sharani only when a hadith included the Prophet's own clear abrogation, like his report about visiting graves, could it be considered nask. Shah Wali Allah was similarly skeptical of the ulama's excessive indulgence in abrogation to explain the relationship between Quranic verses or hadiths. In all but five cases, he found explanations for how to understand the relationship between scriptural passages without recourse to abrogation. According to David Powers, Islamic scholars have asked if inherent in abrogation is not the question of whether the Quran is really the word of an eternal, all-knowing, omniscient, omnipotent God, since such a God would have no need to change his mind his eternal divine will, and would not reveal something wrong or imperfect in the first place. Why would the Quran—the creation of omniscient, omnipotent God—have contradictions within it, or verses in need of being replaced by another, the God changing his mind? Problem has led a few Islamic scholars to deny the theory of Nasq, declaring the Quran to be perfect and without any contradictions through rationalizing the contradictions and reinterpreting contradictory verses. The vast majority of scholars, however, accept that there are significant contradictions within the Quran, within the Hadiths, between the Quran and the Hadiths, and that the doctrine of abrogation as revealed by the Quran is necessary to establish Sharia. Among the non mainstream sects of Islam that rejected Nasq were the Mutazili, Zaydiya, and Quranists, on the rationalist grounds that the Word of God could not contain contradictions. According to scholar Carol Steenbrink, most 20th century modernist or reformist scholars consider the theory an insult to the integrity and value of the uncreated revelation of God." More recently the Ahmadiyya also reject the theory of Nasq and argue that all Quranic verses have equal validity, in keeping with their emphasis on the "...unsurpassable beauty and unquestionable validity of the Quran." The harmonization of apparently incompatible rulings is resolved through their juridical deflation in Ahmadi fiqh, so that a ruling considered to have applicability only to the specific situation for which it was revealed, is effective not because it was revealed last, but because it is most suited to the situation at hand. 
Topic: Non-Muslim criticism. Philip Schaff argues that the concept of abrogation was developed to «remove» contradictions found in the Quran which according to him, abound «in repetitions and contradictions, which are not removed by the convenient theory of abrogation». Another complaint is that Nasq requires time-bound revelation, which is at odds with a revealer of truth who is an all-knowing, all-wise, eternal, self-existent creator and sustainer of the universe. Defense Aside from the argument that aspects of the Quran's message and the Prophet's teachings had to change as circumstances changed, some Islamic scholars defend Nasq from the God changed his mind problem, maintaining that whoever rejects abrogation has rejected his sovereignty and might, Abd ar Rahman as Sadi, and that abrogation is a mechanism that perfectly reflects God's omnipotence. God can change any ruling with another at any point in time he sees fit. Louis Fatoui. Cyril Glass states that, generally, in Nasq, a universal meaning was modified by a more specific meaning, necessary since the style of divine revelation is direct and absolute, without clauses, exceptions, and qualification. Parway view In answer to complaints by Christians and Jews that the Quran abrogates at least much of the Torah and New Testament, Ghulam Ahmed Parway states that this is simply God's doing, something that humans should not question. The al ul -Kitab people of the book also question the need for a new revelation Quran when previous revelations from Allah exist. They further ask why the Quran contains injunctions contrary to the earlier revelation the Torah if it is from Allah. Say to them that no one can question why Allah has adopted such a system of revelation. Do they not know that Allah, who is sovereign over the universe, alone knows which law is to be revealed and at what time? Say to them that, if despite knowing this fact, they still refuse to obey this code of laws, they will find that no other code can resolve the problems of life. In this context, O Jamit ul Maminin, the convinced Muslims. History The emergence of Nasq initially as practice and then as fully elaborated theory dates back to the first centuries of Islamic civilization. Almost all classical Nasq works, for instance, begin by recounting the incident of the Kufan preacher banned from expounding the Quran by an early ilmic authority figure usually Ali but sometimes also Ibn Abbas on account of his ignorance of the principles of Nasq. Whatever the historicity of such traditions, the elaboration of the theories is datable with certainty to at least the latter half of the second century after Muhammad, when Shafi'i, in his Rizala and in the somewhat later Ikhtilaf al-Hadith was applying his considerable talents to resolving the serious problem of the apparent discrepancies between certain Quranic verses and others, between certain Hadiths and others, and, most serious of all, between certain Quranic verses and certain Hadiths. More precisely, Nasq is a technical term meaning abrogation, although the precise sense of that must be left open makes its appearance early on in exegesis, for example, in Mukatil's d. 767 comms Mia Aya and, of course, his tafsir. Topic. Historical elaboration Like other technical terms within Islamic exegesis e.g. Asbab al-Nuzal, Nasq attained its formal meaning through a process of theoretical refinement in which early applications of the concept were abandoned upon further logical or religious consideration. Tabari's ambivalent use of the term for the eradication of satanic material has already been noted. Among Nasq, s other, ultimately discarded, uses in early works of tafsir are, the abrogation of a ruling from pre-Islamic Arabia, and the juridical deflation of a broadly applicable ruling by a succeeding one which narrows its scope al-ayah. An exception is provided to the verse. The latter usage was reformulated by Shafi'i as toxis specification, exception, resulting in a marked decrease in the amount of material considered mansik, putting aside dubiously attributed works, such as the Nasq al-Qur and of al-Zuri. The principle of abrogation without its Nasq terminology makes one of its earliest documented appearance in the Mawada of Malik. 
In his review of the question of whether the Muslim traveler should observe or may postpone the obligation to fast during the month of Ramadan, which involves him in a comparison of conflicting opinion reported from many prominent Muslims of the past, including contradictory reports as to the practice of the Prophet himself, Malik states that his teacher Zuri had told him that the Muslims had adopted as standard the latest of all the Prophet's reported actions. While in another chapter Malik himself actually states that of the two relevant Quran rulings, one had replaced the other. Elsewhere, Malik rejects the notion that a ruling remains valid despite the reported withdrawal of the wording of the supposed Quran verse said to have originally imposed the ruling in question. The impetus for this principle, seen already in Malik's day, was the need to harmonize the regional variants of Islamic law both with one another as well as the putative sources of Islamic law. That the starting point for these local fix was in fact neither the Quran nor the Sunnah in its later sense of the Sunnah of Muhammad has been shown by Shakht. As authority for local views began to be attributed back in time to the companions and eventually Muhammad himself documented by what Shakht terms the backward growth of Isnads the contradictions in regional fiqh became irreconcilable. Nask allowed for the alleviation of these tensions by the claim that, in the case of two soundly Documented traditions contradicting one another, one had come later and abrogated the other, yet even after the need to ground their legal theories in either Sunnah or Quran became apparent to the jurists, the regional fix were not discarded, but became the third source in reformulating Islamic law, on par with and of even greater importance than Sunnah or Quran. This can be seen in the postulation of lost verses whose rulings were still operative and conventionally corroborative of the jurists' own school of fiqh, e.g., the stoning and suckling verses. It is also evinced in Shafi'i's remarkable admission that but for the guidance of the Sunnah the Muslims would have had no choice but to carry out the rulings of the Quran. Theology Nasq stimulated several lines of theologizing to reconcile this reality of the fiqh. With Islam's core religious doctrines, probably the most immediate concern was explaining the very existence of progressive revelation. What could account for God's turn to this expedient outside of limits to his omniscience subsequent rulings are better because they are informed by superior knowledge or inconstancy in the divine will? Both prospects were repugnant to orthodox theologians at least of the Sunni variety, compare this to the Shiite doctrine of Bada, however, and so other rationales were put forth. One of these relied upon the tried apologetic technique of reconstruing apparent limitations in the Creator as expressions of solicitude towards His creatures, introducing less onerous requirements. The ruling may be better for you in this life, on account of its being easier to perform, where a previous obligation has been withdrawn, relieving you of the more difficult performance. For example, it has once been obligatory for the Muslims to engage in lengthy nocturnal prayers Q. 73 they were relieved of that burden Q. 73 that is an instance in which the nasik abrogating verse was better for them in this life. Yet takfif is equally applicable where the nasik introduces a more onerous requirement for example, the extension of the ritual fast from a few days Q. 2 to the entire month of Ramadan Q. 2 as its performance is better for men on account of it helping them attain greater reward in the hereafter, or even when the change is indifferent, such as the switching of the Qibla, as the reward will not change. Clearly, then, the criteria of takfif is unfalsifiable, completely useless for distinguishing nasik from mansik, and therefore entirely dogmatic in character. Another, much more specifically Islamic, problem was raised by the doctrine by mujaz or the literary perfection and inimitability of the Quran. How could one ayah be replaced by one which is better than it, as Q2-106 explicitly promises, if all ayat or inimitable and therefore incommensurable? This issue was sidestepped by interpolation, the superior replacement is the verse's ruling, not the verse's wording, and so no violation of the doctrine of mujaz is entailed. Lastly, there is the issue of abrogated material whose wording is preserved in the mashaf nask al duna al tilawa. since the verse's ruling is inoperative, what purpose is served by retaining its wording? One common rationale, expressed here by Suyuti Itkin and mirroring the takfif argument was, the Quran was revealed so that its rulings might be known and their implementation rewarded, but the Quran is also recited with reverence, since it is the word of God, for whose recitation the pious Muslim is likewise rewarded. 
Further, to leave the wording, following the abrogation of the ruling was to provide for men a constant reminder of the compassion and mercy shown by their gracious Lord R. Rahman, who had lightened the burden of some his previous requirements. Overall, though, the Muslim commentators demonstrate a remarkable degree of complacency in the face of Nasq's more theologically disturbing implications, supremely confident as expressed in the following gloss on a famous Aisha hadith that whatever the mechanisms used to expurgate or cancel the divine revelation, what has ultimately come down to us is exactly what Allah intended mankind to have. We were too occupied with the preparations in the Prophet's sick room to give any thought to the safe keeping of the sheets on which the revelations had been written out, and while we were tending our patient, a household animal got in from the yard and gobbled up some of the sheets which were kept below the bedding. Those who would account for all events here below in terms of divine agency could see in this most unfortunate mishap nothing incongruous with the divine promise, having revealed the reminder, to preserve it. Here, indeed, was the working of the divine purpose. Their removal, as an aspect of the divine revelatory procedures had been determined by God and had occurred under effective divine control. Having determined that these verses would not appear in the final draft of his book, God had arranged for their removal. The revelation was never, at any time, at the mercy of accidental forces. Such complacency reflects the important constitutive effects of Nasc's eventual theological sanitization. Once the genuineness of God's abrogation of his own commandments was accepted, the fact that no intelligible pattern underlay his sequence of actions was taken as indicative of important facts about the nature of the Creator, as well as the proper duties of his creatures. In particular this reinforced the extreme deontological currents within Islamic philosophy and ethics. The Supreme Being imposes or forbids what he chooses. Nothing is either good or evil per se, God does not command the good and prohibit the evil, what God commands is good and what he forbids is evil. God is under no compulsion to any external moral imperative. Adherence to what he commands will be rewarded, performance of what he forbids will be punished. Both command and prohibition being tests of human obedience, God may ask what he chooses. The Creator and Sovereign Lord of the Universe shares his absolute power with none. To test man's obedience, God may order them to do whatever he chooses, or to desist from whatever he wills. He may command what was never previously required or forbid what was previously unregulated, equally. He may prohibit what he himself had actually commanded, or command what he himself had previously prohibited. Nor may men question anything that God requires of them. They must only identify what God has commanded or forbidden and act immediately to demonstrate their creaturely status and humble obedience. <laughs> Nask in Islamic law <laughs> In Sunni jurisprudence The Maliki, Shafi'i and Hanbali schools of Sunni Islam have maintained that only Quranic verses revealed later can abrogate an earlier Quranic verse, but a Sunnah from a Hadith can never abrogate a Quranic verse. In contrast, the Hanafi fiqh of Sunni Islam, from the days of Abu Hanifa, along with his disciples such as Abu Yusuf, maintained that Sunnah can abrogate a Quranic verse. The Hanafi jurists used Quranic verse 1015 to justify their opinion, stating that abrogation of the Quran by the life actions of Muhammad Sunnah was based solely on his divine inspiration, that when he acted or said anything, any abrogation implicit through his action, of the earlier Quranic ruling was from Allah alone, according to Yusuf Suismas. Hanafi school stated, adds Suismas, that to accept that, a Sunnah can abrogate the Quran entails honoring of Muhammad. Topic. Innovation While traditional doctrine of Nasq has been used to abrogate earlier ayat in favor of later ones, which form the basis of Islamic law, this was reversed by Sudanese scholar Mahmud Muhammad Taha, who advanced the idea that the Meccan surah, while revealed earlier and which give more prominence to the position of women and also praise other prophets and their communities, i.e. Jews and Christians, contain the basic and pure doctrine of Islam, and should form the basis of the legislation for modern society. These ayat abrogate some of the later and less tolerant but specialized Medinan surah which were revealed while Muhammad was governing that city and contain compromises for its political climate. While the Medinan surah were appropriate for their time, their doctrine is not eternal and not necessarily appropriate for the 20th or 21st century. 
Between sources Abrogation is applicable to both sources of sharia, the Quran and the hadiths, a Quranic verse may abrogate another Quranic verse, and a sunnah in hadiths may likewise abrogate another sunnah. The possibility of abrogation between these two sources, though, was a more contentious issue precipitated by the absence within a source of the appropriate abrogating or abrogated material necessary to bring concordance between it and the fiqh. The scope of Nasq doctrine between sources has been one of the major differences between the Shafi'i and Hanafi fiqhs, with Shafi'i sect of jurisprudence forbidding abrogation by the Sunnah of the Quran, while Hanafi sect allowing abrogation by the Sunnah of the Quran. In Shafi'i's source theory, the possibility of abrogation between the Sunnah and the Quran was vehemently denied. Arguing determinedly that any verbal discrepancies between the Quran and the reported sayings or reports of the practices of Muhammad the Sunnah of the Prophet, were merely illusory and could always be removed on the basis of a satisfactory understanding of the mechanism of revelation and the function of the prophet figure. Shafi'i set his face decidedly against any acceptance of the idea then current that in all such cases the Quran had abrogated the Sunnah, or the Sunnah the Quran. This stance was a reaction to larger developments within Islamic jurisprudence, particularly the reformulation of the fiqh away from early foreign or regional influences and toward more eminently Islamic bases such as the Quran. This assertion of Quranic primacy was accompanied by calls for an abandonment of the Sunnah. Shafi'i's insistence upon the impossibility of contradiction between Sunnah and Quran can thus be seen as one component in this larger effort of rescuing the Sunnah. Asked point blank whether the Sunnah could ever be abrogated by the Quran, Shafi'i had bluntly replied in the Rizala that that could never happen. How could the practice of the Prophet be different from the commands revealed to him by God and recited to his followers? Were the Sunnah to be abrogated by the Quran, the Prophet would immediately introduce a second Sunnah to indicate that his first Sunnah had been abrogated by his second Sunnah in order to demonstrate that a thing can be abrogated only by its like midlihi cf. Q. 2-106. Later scholars, writing when the juridical legitimacy of the Sunnah could be taken for granted thanks largely to Shafi'i's efforts, were less inclined to adopt his inflexible stance. To their minds the reality of this sort of inter-source abrogation was proven by several indisputable instances, the changing of the Qibla towards Mecca and away from Jerusalem, and the introduction of the penalty of stoning for adultery. The following passage from Qurtabai al Li Akam al Quran is representative in this regard. The Quran may be nasq ed by the Quran and the Sunnah by the Sunnah. The Quran may, in addition, be nasq ed by the Sunnah, as has occurred in the case of Q2 180, which was replaced by the Sunnah ruling, no wasiya extra bequest, in favor of an heir. Malik admitted this principle, but Shafi'i denied it, although the Fuqaha all admit, in the instance of the penalty for adultery, that the flogging element of Q24-2 has been allowed to lapse in the case of those offenders who are condemned to death by stoning. There is no explanation for the abandonment of the flogging element other than that the penalty all now acknowledge is based on the Sunnah, i.e. the practice of the Prophet. In the instance of the change of Qibla, a Sunnah ruling was set aside in favor of a Quran ruling. There is no reference in the Quran to the Jerusalem direction of prayer. Al-Ghazali employs the same examples in his Mustasfa. Literature In addition to being discussed within general works of jurisprudence, Nasq generated its own corpus of specialized legal manuals. These treatises invariably begin with an introduction designed to impress the importance and high Islamic credibility of the science, often by an appeal to ilmic authority figures of the past as in the story of Ali and the Kufan preacher. As is made clear in these stories, none may occupy judicial or religious office in the community who is not equipped with this indispensable knowledge and who is incapable of distinguishing Nasik abrogator from Mansik abrogatee. The remainder of the introduction then typically treats the various modes of Nasq, Nasq s applicability between Sunnah and Quran, and in appeasement of theological scruples why Nasq is not the same as Bada, or inconstancy of the divine will. Following this comes the core of the treatise, an enumeration of abrogated verses in surah order of the Quran. In their consideration of Nasik wal Mansik, the taxonomic predilections of these authors comes out, evinced in their discussions of special verses considered marvels 
Ajaib of the Quran, such as the verse which abrogates the greatest number of other verses Q, 9 the verse which was in effect longest until it was abrogated Q, 46 and the verse which contains both an abrogatee and its abrogator Q, 5 Topic: <laughs> Works The following is a list of classical examples of the genre. al -Juri. Nask al Quran Abu Ubaid al Qasim b. Salam d. 838, Kitab al Nasik wal Mansik, Book of the Abrogating and Abrogated Verses Al Nahas d. 949, Kitab al Nasik wal Mansik Habat Allah ibn Salama d. 1019, Kitab al Nasik wal Mansik Al Baghdadi d. 1037, Al Nasik wal Mansik Maki b. Abu Talib al Kc d. 1045, al Ida li al Quran wa Mansikihi, Ibn al Ataiki d. 1308, al Nasik wal Mansik, Ibn Kuzayma al Farisi, Kitab al Mujaz fil Nasik wal Mansik, Ibn al Jazi, Nawazik al Quran, Jalal ud din al Suyuti, al Itkan fi ulam al Quran. Modern examples include Ahmad Shah Walula Delvi, Al Faz Al Kabir Fi Yusul Al Tafsir, Mustafa Zaid, Al Nasq Fil Quran Al Karim, Cairo, Dar Al Fikr Al Arabi, 1963, Ali Hassan Al Arid, Fath Al Manan Fi Nasq Al Quran, Abd Al Mutal Al Jabri, Al Nasik Wal Mansik Bain Al Ithbat Wal Nafi, Cairo, Waba Bookstore, 1987, Mustafa Ibrahim al Zalmi, al Tibian Liraf Gumid al Nasq fi al Quran, Arbal, National Library, Iraq, 2000. Ehab Hassan Abdu, Istihalat Wujud al Nasq fi al Quran, Cairo, Al Nafitha Bookstore, 2005. Topic. See also Bada Tafsir Asbab al Nuzal Fiqh Yusul al Fiqh Muhammad ibn Idris ash Shafi I Progressive Revelation Christianity Recon Topic References Topic Citations Topic Books, articles, etc. Nasq. Encyclopedia of Islam CD-ROM v. 1.0 ed. 1999. Brown, Jonathan A. C. 2014. Misquoting Muhammad, The Challenge and Choices of Interpreting the Prophet's Legacy. Oneworld Publications. ISBN 978-1780744209. Retrieved 4 June 2018. John Burton 1970. Those are the high flying cranes. Journal of Semitic Studies, 15, 246 264. doi 101093 JSS, 15.2.246. John Burton. 1985. The Exegesis of Q2 106 and the Islamic Theories of Nasq, Ma Nansik Min Aya A Nansaha, Nati by Karen Mina A Mithliya. Bulletin of the School of Oriental and African Studies. 48 452–469. 10.1017, S0041977X0003843X. John Burton 1990. The Sources of Islamic Law, Islamic Theories of Abrogation PDF. Edinburgh University Press. ISBN 0-7486-0108-2. Andrew Rippon 1984. Al-Juri. Bulletin of the School of Oriental and African Studies. 47 doi. 10.1017, S0041977X0002126 Andrew Rippon, Editor 1988. Approaches to the History of the Interpretation of the Quran. Oxford University Press. 
ISBN 0 19 826546 8. CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List. Link. David S. Powers. The Exegetical Genre Nasik al Quran wa Mansukuhu. 117 138. Andrew Rippon. 1988. Asbab al Nuzal. Bulletin of the School of Oriental and African Studies. 51 01, 1-20. doi, 10.1017, S0041977X0002018. Moshe Sharon, ed. 1997. Studies in Islamic History and Civilization in Honor of Professor David Ayalon. Brill Academic Publishers. ISBN 965-264-014-X, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link. Johannan Friedman. Jihad. 221-236. John Wansbrow and Andrew Rippon, ed. 2004. Quranic Studies, Sources and Methods of Scriptural Interpretation. Prometheus Books. ISBN 1-59102-201-0, CS1 maint, Extra Text, Authors List link. Topic. External links Book, Abrogation in the Quran and Islamic Law Submission.org's Claim Against the Quran Abrogation Clarifications by Bismikalahuma.org